Hello, I'm just going to go over these uh, tasks 18, 19 and 20 from the database booklet and um, the data dictionary tasks. Uh, you probably feel quite confident with data dictionaries already because you've been doing them for about three years but still uh, it's easy to make mistakes with them and there are a few changes at advanced higher. So let's go through them, I'll go through them as quick as I can. On the left here I've got the tasks and on the right my um, solutions created last year in discussion with the class so there are a few bits that you might not have the exact same anyway um, task 18 is pretty straightforward it's just a, a flat file database um, we've got four fields four attributes so here they all are animal ID animal name category best place to see probably if I just go through each of them in order would be the best thing so animal ID first of all it's clearly the primary key and I don't know if it actually even says it here but um, it's also clearly integer. Int, remember, is one of the new data types to put in, which means we don't need to put size. Primary keys are always required, and what I was looking for was any mention of auto incrementation, but um, I think it would be fair to say you would set that to auto increment. Uh, I can't see any mention of it, but you know, a primary key is essentially a surrogate key there. It's just been put there, it serves no other purpose than. To be a unique identifier so put it as auto increment okay animal name uh, straightforward it is text so we now put that as var char as in uh, it's like variable number of characters okay some characters and it's a variable number and we can put anything up to 255 for the size so whenever it's var char we have to put a size remember this is the maximum number of characters that you think would be required for that now if we have all the data that's ever going to be in the database then we can literally just count up the the largest um, you know largest piece of data and see how many characters in it if not then we can just sort of judge it a bit it, you know if there's going to be more data added in the future we just have to think of it 30 seems quite small to me I, I mean red necked fella rope never heard of it um, seems quite long but you know, 30, 40, 50, they would all seem sensible. Remember, you don't want to be excessive because that if you end up with a large, uh, a large file of data, then you're going to be using up a lot of space that, that isn't even required. All this gets set aside for each record. Okay, so those 30 characters get set aside for each record. A byte, a character. Uh, you know, it might not sound a lot if you're, you're wasting it, but once we get into thousands or tens of thousands or even millions of records that can mount up to a lot of wasted space okay i think for this one the name's probably required i can't see any obvious validation that we'd put if you know you might disagree slightly with some of these we had a lot of discussion when uh when i've gone over this with uh with the class previously okay category um varchar again i picked 40 you know wading and ground nesting bird um, fit that in but there might be other categories required I didn't think it was required but again you know putting yes I don't think it would be a big deal you know looking at this it's the best place to spot uh, Scottish wildlife but but maybe it would be required maybe you'd want the user to be able to search for the best places to see birds of prey in which case you'd need to have the category filled in so no yes I could go with either there and it looks to me like restricted choice there you've got a whole load of mammals whole load of birds prey that that would make sense a restricted choice okay best place to see um varchar again I just went for 255 we seem to have some fairly lengthy descriptions you might have chosen a bit less I don't know um I think that's required because again you see I've got a question mark because I obviously had some arguments with the uh, with the class previously but the whole point of it is to display information about the best places to spot Scottish wildlife so I think you need to have the best place to see field um, filled in so to me that's a yes and again I can't see any obvious validation okay um, let me know if you disagree with any of this stuff uh, and you know you're not sure about it you're concerned about it concerned you know what I mean you, you want to check that you're getting it right okay task 19 the phone contacts oh 
mouth's dry. Um, this this is slightly confusing, I think. There's something very slightly confusing about it. But anyway, let's have a look at it. So so again, I think we're dealing with flat file, one one table, certainly for this task we are. First name, surname, mobile, blah, 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 group identifier. So here I've got them all. First name, surname, mobile phone, home phone, email address, group ID, and then... I mean, contact number, I've called it. I can't remember if I took this from a marking scheme. This this task is taken from some previous SQA thing. Um, you know, contact ID, whatever you want to call it. Contact ID might be slightly less confusing. Um, anyway, so I, th I think we need a primary key of some description, a surrogate key here. Um, make an integer, it will be required, and auto-increment it. Okay, so I've just made that up to go in. You could call it whatever you like. But I think that's the best way of doing a uh, primary key there. There are other options, I suppose. Um, you know, you could do some sort of big compound key, but a surrogate key is much neater. Okay, first name, bar char, I mean, pick a number. And I think probably we want the first name, you know, when you add it to your phone, you want, uh, you have to put a name in, don't you, I think. Um, Surname, bar chart, again, I mean, pick a number here that seems suitable. And I don't think, I don't think that's required. When I add contacts to my phone, I always just type it all in the first name. I'm quite lazy. Um, again, maybe you disagree. It's not clear. We're having to make some assumptions here for all of these. Uh, mobile phone, again, we all know that um, phone numbers need to be text. We should know that by now. I noticed this one. I just had a look at it a moment ago, and it seems to be one too many characters. Unless I'm getting totally confused, but um, and I think mobile phone numbers are eleven characters long. Mm -hmm. I think eleven. Um, I obviously thought so at the time. Uh, required. I mean. There, oh, I remember this discussion from last year now, sorry, just as I started talking, we we were talking about a way, you know, whether you can make it so you have to put one of these in. Neither of them is required, but one out of the two must be filled in. I think there are ways uh, of doing that, we found out. How we write that in a data dictionary, we, we were never too sure. I would say... Um, I would say neither of them is required, but we can add a rule in when we create the database saying you have to have com uh, you have to have filled in one of them. Anyway, um, maybe you've disagreed with me there, and I think uh, a length check is suitable for a phone number. Again, home phone number, twelve. Can they be twelve? I mean, length. There was obviously there was obviously some argument when we went over this previously. Um, I could go with anything suitable here and again you might disagree maybe you think a home phone number is required i wouldn't have said so on a smartphone contacts thing anyway uh email varchar i mean pff, probably we should actually put that as 255 or something i'm pretty sure you can have massive long email addresses uh probably not required can't think of any validation address again I mean, address, you could probably put that as 255, really, VARCHAR 255. I don't think that's required on a smartphone. And then group ID, um, again, we're, we're just making assumptions here. But it looks to me like maybe there'll be, I don't know whether uh, the user gets to choose a group ID, you know, make, make their own ones up, or whether there are a few preset ones or what. Um, but definitely VARCHAR, I mean, it depends whether the size depends on whether they get to make up their own ones or not. It looks like it's not required. I mean, why would it be required that you put it in a group? Possibly there's a restricted choice, maybe, of the ones that exist already. So, uh, lots of possibilities there, lots of um, areas in which you might disagree with me. Um, but, you know, key points at Advanced Tire uh, that we're, we are encountering are giving uh, different types for the data, remember it's int, varchar, um, float, I can't even remember what the other ones are, um, and you know, using auto increment in the validation. 
Um, right, let's move on. Last one. All oh, right, so this is uh, uh, relational unlinked link tables, and for this one, yeah, we have to do an ERD entity occurrence and data dictionary. Fun. Okay. So now I had a discussion with someone who'd actually done database development um, as a career, which I never have done, um, and I, I did, we were discussing whether you would do in real life the ERD first or the, the EO diagram first, and actually the consensus was you do whatever you like first. To me it makes sense to do the ERD first, the Entity Relationship Diagram. So this is actually largely just higher level, largely. Um, look, at the, look at the foreign keys as always, and they give you your link, the many side of a relationship. So uh, one player to many game scores, and one game to many games. Okay, so we've got the close foot there. Um, and just some really weak phrases, has. One player has many game scores, one game has many game scores. I think it's fair enough though. And then uh, we've put in the participation here as well. Something we have to do at advanced hire. So I've, I've said that um, in the player game score relationship, you can have a player set up and you don't necessarily have to have a game score for them. I think that's reasonable. Again, obviously, someone questioned it and convinced me that I should at least put a question mark there. But I think game score would be optional. I don't think you need that. Um, a game score, on the other hand, I think in order to have a game score, it needs to be linked to a player. So player is mandatory. And then at the other side, uh, a game can exist without having game scores stored for it I would say so it's optional and a game score has to be linked to a game so game is mandatory you notice there's a, quite a, a close relationship there between the cardinality and the the participation you know the the one-to-many relationship we tend to have a, a mandatory and optional not guaranteed though I don't think anyway entity occurrence diagram higher level should be easy I mean, or should be revision at least. Just go through it, you know, shocker, uh, <laughs> shocker, uh, shocker links to 625 and 628, and you can, uh, there we go, 625, 628, just make sure you get them all. Just be careful if you have to do an EO diagram, okay? But it's that's just the same as advanced, as, excuse me, as higher. So I'm not going over that again. Uh, let's look at the data dictionary. So, um, first one. I haven't titled these entities. Shoddy. Ill shoddy. Uh, right, player, first of all. So, username. I'm going to assume that's a primary key. I mean, we, maybe there's a surrogate key in there that we're not seeing, but I, I'm going to use that as the primary key. It's varchar. I mean, size. Who knows? Maybe 255. Maybe 50. Maybe 10. I don't know. Um, go for something suitable. It's a primary key, so it's required. Okay, the real name, um, Varchar, you know, it's a name, pick something. Required, possibly. We're making assumptions here. Um, password, Varchar again. Size of the password, who knows? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Required, I'd say definitely. And maybe there's a length check on the password, you know, a minimum length. Um, so you might have put something in there, length greater than whatever, 8, 16, whatever they put. Um, email, again, Varchar, pick whatever you like there. Required, probably, when you, you know, sign up to something like that. Message, Varchar, I mean, I wouldn't have thought that's required. I love games. Is that, uh, I'm part of an esports team. Good for you, Sally Scott. Oh no, Sally at Scott. Sally McDonald, sorry. Um, you know, I don't think that's required, but obviously someone argued with me previously because I have put a question mark. And then terms and conditions. Um, I mean, again, that's not clear. We're making assumptions here. To me, that seems like an obvious Boolean thing. You've either agreed or you haven't. Um, 
but you, you could argue that it could be done as var char. It certainly could be done as var char, as a piece of text, and I assume it would be on and off. So you'd maybe have a restricted choice on and off. I mean, we're making lots of assumptions here. I'd go personally. I'd go for boolean with that, and it's definitely required. Agreeing with the terms and conditions, you you need to find out whether they've done that or not. Okay, game score. Um, what have we got here? Gets a bit easier, I think. Score ID. I mean, that's definitely clearly primary key. In fact, I've just realised. I said, oh, username. That could be the primary key. What a fool! It's right here, underlined. Read the question now. Read the question. Right. Um, okay, so score ID is a primary key. It's int, and it'll be auto increment, and it's required because it's a primary key. Username. Yeah, uh, it's a foreign key. Varchar. I think important here is just to make sure whatever you put for username here matches up with whatever you put up here. So varchar fifty. Okay, just make sure that matches up. Um, it's uh, if we look back at our relationships up here. You know, in that relationship, player was mandatory. You had to have a player linked to a game score, so that means this has to be required because the you know there's a mandatory participation in the relationship. Okay, and it's the usual foreign key stuff, something along those lines. You know, look up existing username from player table, that sort of thing right there. Uh, game very similar, foreign key varchar. Um, I've put as a hundred. Will it'll become more obvious when we look at that, but it should match up. And again, it's a foreign key, and it was it's a mandatory participation, so it's definitely required. And score, um, just int, so we don't need to put a size. And um, I would say that's probably required if you're storing game scores. So there we go. And finally, game, which is a nice small table. Come on, let's just move down here. Um, so game, it is the primary key. Varchar 100, so I'm just making sure it matches up with what I had in the game score table. Um, it's required because it's primary key. And uh, platform Varchar, is it required? I mean, I thought so, but you know, not a big deal. Um, I don't know if there are any platforms you would put that would have more than 30 characters, and I think this would be a sensible thing to have a restricted choice for so that don't have people typing in xbox when clearly they mean x station the fools okay um hope that helps see ya